Good day, my name is Kmot. This podcast is brought to you by Majuba TVET College. It specifically relates to N6 income tax for South African TVET colleges. In this presentation, I specifically want to focus on the determination of tax income for natural persons. And for ease of reverence, I'd like to refer to this presentation as part one. In part one, I'd like to tackle the structure of taxable income. How do you assume in determining the taxable income in order to calculate what is called the tax liability? I'd like to start by emphasizing that students can use any income tax textbooks, as all income tax textbooks would contain the structure of the calculation of uh, taxable income. For the purpose of this presentation, I've decided to use silk uh, to illustrate how the structure of uh, the calculation of taxable income looks like. Just quickly, I want to take you to silk. That's essentially how silk looks like. I've used the 2017 uh, version, volume one, even though it's outdated because now we're in 2020. I'd like to emphasize the fact that the structure hasn't changed. I just quickly want to take you to how the structure looks like. There you go. That's essentially how it looks like. I'm going to discuss it in detail in reference to November 20, um, 9, 2016 question paper that was written at a TVET college. As I've mentioned, I'd like us to look at the November 2016 question paper. Before I even proceed to the structure, I just want to show you how the question paper looks like. So essentially, that's the question paper, and I quickly want us to look at uh, question four. Question four related to a natural person called Tipto. Uh, Tipto is a taxpayer, a resident of the Republic, Republic being South Africa, and cut dates were required to determine uh, the tax liability of Tipto. Without going into details in terms of uh, execution of the calculations, I'd quickly like us to go to the structure and in subsequent uh, presentations, we'll focus on the calculations of uh, a taxable income relating to TIP2. So essentially, that's how the structure looks like. I quickly want to get the laser so that you can be able to follow where exactly I'm at. I'd like to emphasize that uh, you do not necessarily have to present it this way. There are many uh, presentations that are acceptable when executing the calculation of tax, uh, taxable income. I quickly want to go to my structure. The first column is dedicated to descriptions and uh, uh, descriptions that will impact the calculation of taxable income. And that column, it's not necessary. Some students might not necessarily have it. It's, it relates to the calculations uh, specifically relating to items that were taken into account in determining tax of income. The next column, uh, um, uh, it's not uh, prescriptive. However, I urge students to use it because it basically relates to lump sums. This will only be applicable if you're dealing with a taxpayer who has lump sums that are rose due to retirement or, or severance benefits that also are taken into account when the taxpayer retires. The next column is for other items. Uh, if you have lump sums, chances are you'll have these two columns. The third column is just a cosmetic entry. I'm just going to use it to communicate uh, totals for gross income, income, and uh, taxable income. You'll realize that in other institutions, maybe even in most institutions, uh, students do not necessarily use the, the structure. So you don't have to concern yourself about the structure. You need to worry about uh, the principles employed in determining the taxable income. Without wasting any time, I'd like us to look at the contents of the structure of the calculation of taxable income. We're gonna start by taking what we call gross income. Remember, gross income is defined in Section 1 of the Income Tax Act. All your potential income items, that is, items that are considered to be um, income items for TIPTO, are likely to be classified as gross income. Remember, if they're capital in nature, of course, I'll do a presentation at a later stage. 
they won't be included in your in your um, other column. However, in the description, we're going to include all potential income items, regardless of the fact that they are capital or revenue in nature. I'll highlight uh, the differences between the two at a later stage when I tackle it in a dedicated presentation to gross income. So you're going to start by salary and then you're going to take the pension uh, annuity into account. Remember, this information was per uh, the 2016, November 2016 question paper. Uh, from salary until um, medical eight uh, contributions, all those items uh, are classified, are uh, likely to be classified as gross income. And all these items will be included in that column. You remember this column is specifically uh, dedicated to uh, lump sums. In the 2016 question paper, we had uh, three lump sums, uh, one arising from gratuity, which is referred to as a severance benefit. The other was attributable to accumulated leave, which is also a severance benefit. And the last lump sum was from pension uh, fund, which is a, referred to as a retirement lump sum. The difference between the two is that uh, uh, the lump sum from pension is as a result of the taxpayer contributing to the pension on a monthly basis so that uh, they could be entitled to a pension lump sum when they retire. Gratuity and accumulated leave are, arises uh, from employment. Gratuity could be voluntary. Uh, the, the employer could have the practice to uh, compensate uh, their employees when they retire. Accumulated leave, as the name suggests, could be leave that was not actually utilized by the taxpayer. It accumulated and the taxpayer was compensated for such leave. I'd like to emphasize that all these three items will be treated as lump sums and they'll be included in that column and at the end they will form their own taxable income. The reason we clearly distinguish between this column and that column, which relates to all other items except uh, the lump sums, is because at the end of the day when we determine the taxpayer's taxable income, we're going to apply different uh, tables um, in determining the taxable income. I'll explain uh, the logic uh, further in separating the two in subsequent presentations. Moving along swiftly, uh, once you've determined all your gross income item, I'd like to focus under your other uh, items. You're going to deduct from your other items. You're going to deduct what you call um, exemptions. Exemptions are tackled in Section 10 of the Income Tax Act. If a student is not uh, uh, comfortable with uh, exemptions relating to a taxpayer, they need to consult section 10 of the uh, of their textbooks. All income tax textbooks would contain um, section 10, which specific, specifically relates to exemptions uh, granted to natural granted to taxpayers, granted to all taxpayers, well, both natural persons and juristic persons. I'd like to bring to your attention that uh, interest received and dividends received were asked in November 2016 and uh, of importance to note is that those are the most popular uh, exemptions you can get in any income tax exam question. The difference between your gross income and your total of your exemptions, it's called income. And then from there, you're going to... Uh, proceed by deducting your expenses uh, for tax purposes. We clearly distinguish between those expenses that are permissible and those expenses that are not permissible. Even though an expense is not deductible, if it's given in a specific question paper, we write it and we indicate by zero. I don't want to do all much into uh, principles, but what I want to wanted to emphasize is that from your income, you're going to deduct your um, uh, expenses and then you're going to get taxable income before retirement funds and donation there's a 
there's a sequence and the sequence is quite key in determining the correct uh, taxable income used uh, for different calculation purposes. As you can see, I've, I've called that item um, taxable income before retirement funds and donation. Um, after that item, you're going to determine what we call retirement uh, fund uh, deductions in terms of section uh, capital letter F. Um, I don't want to discuss the principles relating to this deduction because it will be time consuming. There will be a special uh, presentation dedicated to principles relating to section 11F. But at this point in time, I wanted to discuss the fact that uh, if you're given the retirement funds and if you've, a taxpayer made a donation contribution to what we call a public benefit organization, we'll first start by the retirement fund uh, deduction and then tackle the donation contribution. In November 2016, uh, TIPTO didn't contribute to a public benefit uh, organization. So there wasn't any donation to a public benefit organization by TIPTO. So I'm not going to deal with that uh, deduction for that question paper. After you've uh, determined the permissible deduction in terms of Section 11F, you will take it to, 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 to the other column deducted from taxable income to arrive at the final figure of the taxable income. We're going to use the final figure of the taxable income to determine the tax liability as per the tables, which we'll, dis we'll refer to at a later stage. Um, I think this is where my presentation ends. Uh, please, if there are any questions, feel free to use my cell number or you can post your questions on my email address. Thank you.